Hello everyone. In this talk, we are going to provide a comprehensive introduction to a recent emerging machine learning topic, vertical federated learning. Vertical federated learning VFL is a federated learning setting where multiple parties with different features about the same set of users jointly train machine learning models without exposing their raw data or model parameters, thus protecting data privacy and security while enabling collaborative learning. Motivated by the rapid growth in VFL research and real-world applications, we provide an exhaustive review and categorization of VFL settings and privacy-preserving protocols, and finally propose a unified framework for VFL learning problems. This work is a joint effort from our team at Tsinghua AIR, WeBank AI Daisy Wonderful Technologies. The outline of this work is as follows. First, we provide a comprehensive review of the concept and algorithms of VFL. We then discuss current advances and challenges in various aspects, including effectiveness, efficiency, and privacy, and compare current methods for improving the effectiveness efficiency trade-off under VFL in area. Next, we provide an exhaustive categorization for VFL privacy preserving protocols, as well as comprehensively analyze the privacy attacks and defense strategies for each protocol. Based on the above, we propose a unified framework, termed VFlow, which considers the VFL problem under communication, computation, privacy and effectiveness constraints. Finally, we review the most recent advances in industrial applications, highlighting open challenges and the future directions for VFL. Federated Learning FL is a novel machine learning paradigm, where multiple parties collaborate to build machine learning models without centralizing their data. FL can be categorized into three categories based on how data is partitioned in the sample and feature space, horizontal federated learning HFL. Vertical Federated Learning VFL and Federated Transfer Learning FEL. HFL refers to the FL setting where participants share the same feature space while holding different samples. For example, Google uses HFL to allow mobile phone users to use their data set to collaborate to train a next word prediction model. VFL refers to the FL setting where data sets share the same samples users while holding different features. For example, WeBank uses VFL to collaborate with an invoice agency to build financial risk models for their enterprise customers. FTL refers to the FL setting where data sets differ in both feature and sample spaces with limited overlaps. For example, EEG data from multiple subjects with heterogeneous distributions collaborated build BC, I models using FEL. Each party in HFL trains a local model and exchanges model updates, i.e., parameters or gradients with a server, which aggregates the updates and sends the aggregating result back to each party. While in VFL, each party keeps both its data and model local but exchanges intermediate computed results. The output of the HFL training procedure is a global model, shared among all parties, which can be used for inference separately for each party, while each party in the VFL owns a separate local model after training and still needs collaboration during inference. FL can also be categorized into cross-device which involve a vast number of mobiles or edge devices as the participating parties and cross-silo settings, in which participating parties are typically a limited number of organizations. HFL can be either cross-device or cross-silo FL, while VFL typically belongs to cross-silo FL. In a VFL system, each party holds a port of features and only one party has the label. We refer this party active party and all the rest of parties as passive parties. The training process of VFL can be separate into two steps, namely entity alignment process and privacy preserving training process. In entity alignment process, private set intersection techniques are adopted to find the common sample lids without revealing a negative data set. After entity alignment, Participating parties can start training the VFL model using the aligned samples. 
a general VFL training procedure based on neural networks using stochastic gradient descent as G data is shown in the algorithm. Specifically, each party K computes its local model output HK on a mini batch of samples X and sends HK to the active party, which aggregates all HK and computes the training loss. Then, the active party computes the gradients of its global module and updates its global module. Next, the active party computes the gradients for each party and transmits them back. Finally, each party computes the gradient of its local model and updates their local model accordingly. In VFL, we can decompose the model into local models G and a global module left, which is only accessible by the active party K. The local models G can take various forms including tree, linear and logistic regression LR, support vector machine, k-means, neural network, and, and etc. The global module left can be either trainable or non-trainable. If a trainable global module is in place, this lead FL scenario is coincident with the vertical split and N, where the whole model is split into different parties, thus we term it split BFL. If the global module is non-trainable, it serves as an aggregation function that aggregates participant strip results. We term this scenario aggregate BFL. Another variant of BFL is when the active party has no features and thus it provides no local model. In this variant, the active party plays the role of a central server. We refer to the active party providing no force in split BFL and aggregate BFL, respectively, a split BFLC and aggregate BFLC. In production VFL, network heterogeneity, long geographical distances, and the large size of encrypted data make the coordination a communication bottleneck. Thus, methods proposed to mitigate communication overhead typically involve reducing the cost of coordination and compressing the data transmitted between parties. We categorize these methods into four groups, namely, multiple client updates, asynchronous coordination, one-shot coordination and compression. Methods in the multiple client updates category save the communication cost by allowing participating parties to perform multiple local updates during each iteration, aiming to improve the convergence speed. Asynchronous coordination methods typically enable each party to upload and download intermediate training results, as well as train local models as in Rukshansi so that the coordination time can be significantly reduced. One-shot communication methods alleviate communication overhead by coordinating only once during the entire training procedure. These methods typically follow a two-step training procedure, while all parties extract latent representations from their original data using unsupervised learning to the active party trains the global model using these latent representations. Compression is a commonly used approach in VFL to alleviate the communication overhead by reducing the amount of data transmitted among parties. Principal component analysis, autoencoder and sparsification are commonly used compression methods. Conventional VFL is only able to utilize aligned labeled samples. The availability of aligned labeled samples is scarce in many real-world applications resulting in unsatisfactory performance. Moreover, the collaborative inference is required since each party only has a sub-model after training. To address these limitations, the literature has proposed various directions toward better utilizing available data to build a joint VFL model or helping participating parties build local predictors. We dissect a virtual data set in the two-party VFL setting into several sub-data sets to illustrate which portions of the virtual data set are utilized by a VFL algorithm to train models. Specifically, D denotes the label and the line samples, which is used by the conventional VFL, whereas DAU denotes a line but unlabeled samples. DU, UA and DU, UB denote an alignment and unlabeled samples of party A and party B, respectively. EULA denotes an alignment and labeled samples of party A. For enhancing the performance of the joint model, existing works typically utilize an alignment samples through self-supervised or semi-supervised learning methods to improve representation 
learning capability of participating parties' models. To help the active party build a local predictor, existing works typically leverage knowledge distillation techniques to transfer knowledge of teacher models, obtained through VFL to the active party's local models for enhancing model performance. To help passive parties build a local predictor, existing works typically treat the active party as the source domain that has a large corpus of labeled samples and the passive party as the target domain that only has unlabeled samples or a limited amount of labeled samples. These works leverage VFL as the bridge to transfer knowledge from active party to passive parties. The privacy protection of VFL needs to deal with both transmitted intermediate results TIR and internal intermediate results IIR, such as local gradients. Based on what is protected and exposed during VFL training and inference, VFL protocols can be summarized into five types, including basic protocol P1, which keeps private data and models local but transmit plain text intermediate results, standard protocol P2, which further protects transmitted intermediate results by cryptography, enhanced protocol P3, which further protects entire training protocol by utilizing protection techniques like secure multi-party computation and PC, strict protocol P4, which protects training protocol and learned models by using privacy-preserving techniques such as secret sharing and hybrid schemes that combine HE and SS. In literature and applications, there are also cases where the security assumption of P1 is relaxed resulting in a relaxed protocol P0 in which label or model are assumed non-private. Various kinds of attacks have been tested to be possible under protocols introduced in the above. These attacks can be classified into data reconstruction attacks, which includes label inference attacks and feature reconstruction attacks, and backdoor attacks regarding whether the attacker fails to adhere to the VFL protocol. If the attacker does not deviate from the VFL protocol, but only attempts to learn data information from the other party, it is regarded as honest, but curious. Otherwise, the attacker is regarded as malicious. Feature reconstruction attack can be launched by inverting private local models, while label inference attack can be done by inverting transmitted gradients, or by utilizing auxiliary labeled data to accomplish model completion. On the other hand, backdoor attacks can be done by replacing local data with triggered poison sample, or noisy sample, or by failing to transmit intermediate results to the other party. Label inference attacks can be done by exploiting sample level gradients or batch level gradients or trained models. When the VFL applies P1 protocol, a passive party B, also the attacker, has access to sample level gradients, thus can exploit this information to conduct direct label inference DLI, and can achieve accuracy up to 100% if the active party adopts an untrainable global module such as a softmax function. For special scenarios like binary classification, the attacker can deduce labels from sample level gradients by mounting norm scoring NS or direction scoring DS attack even when the global module is a trainable model e.g. neural network. When the VFL applies the P2 protocol, the passive party VIE, the attacker cannot obtain sample level gradients since it is protected by encryption, but may have access to batch level local model gradients. However, it is shown that it is still possible to infer the true labels with high accuracy through gradient inversion attack GI or the residue reconstruction attack RR. When the VFL applies the P3 protocol, no training information is revealed to any party but only the final trained local model. A possible label inference strategy is for a passive party to fine tune its trained local model with an inference head using auxiliary labeled data and then predict labels using the complete model. This attack is called passive model completion PMC, in which the passive party is semi-honest. An active version of model completion, AMC, can also be conducted by leveraging a malicious local optimizer, instead of normal ones resulting in the federated model into relying more on the local model of the attacker than other parties in order to obtain a local model with better performance. An individual's original feature is at the heart of privacy protection, 
because it contains sensitive information that is not allowed to share. Various attacking methods has been proposed, typically under the setting where the active party with labels A is the attacker, who attempts to recover features of a passive party B. When VFL applies the P0 protocol, that is under white box setting in literature, there are mainly two ways to conduct feature inference attacks, model inversion during the inference phase, like ESA, PRA and GRN, and gradient inversion during the training phase like CAFE. On the other hand, under the black box setting, attackers typically have some prior knowledge about the model, like BFI, RMA and PAA, or data, of the passive party in order to conduct feature inference successfully. Malicious backdoor attacks can be divided into two main categories, targeted and non-targeted, depending on whether the attacker has a determinant backdoor target or not. Targeted backdoor attacks secretly train a model that achieves high performance on both the original and the targeted backdoor asks, and can be achieved by label replacement LRB or use adversarial dominating input the DI samples. Non-targeted backdoor attacks are similar to Byzantine attacks for HFL and aim to hurt the convergence or the performance of the original task by using adversarial samples, noisy samples, or missing features. On the defense side, cryptographic defense strategies, CDS, are wildly explored, which use secure computations to evaluate functions on multiple parties in a way that only the necessary information is exposed to intended participants, while preventing private data from being inferred by possible adversaries. In literature, the focus in this direction is to improve the privacy efficiency trade-off through the in-depth designing of privacy-preserving protocols. We summarize this line of work in the left table and consider a defense follow a particular protocol only when it satisfies all requirements of that protocol. Multiple research works focus on designing CDS to protect the data privacy of vertical linear and logistic regressions like Gastner, Hardler, etc. Designing CDS for vertical neural networks may end and is more challenging for both computation and communication, resulting that current works either target shallow neural networks or are tailored to protect specific intermediate results, exposed to the adversary for balancing privacy and efficiency. CDS can a slow be adopted to tree-based VFL, producing protocols like Secure Boost and Secure Boost Plus. Basic NUM mechanisms relies on adding noise DP, gradient discretization, gradient sparsification, and their hybrid or disguising label, like CIE and DCIE to defend against data inference attacks and backdoor attacks. Other emerging defense strategies are designed to thwart attacks that are difficult to defend against by traditional defense strategies and many of them are for particular attacks. MARVELL and MAX norm defend against norm scoring NS and direction scoring DS attacks by adding optimized noise to the sample level gradients. Confusional autocondor CIE and discrete SGD enhanced confusional autocondor DCIE protects label information by encoding the original real label to soft fake labels with maximum confusion. PE loss and decorrelation are two auxiliary losses that are proposed to defend against the model completion MC attack and spectral attack SA, respectively. Random masking RM is proposed to defense against the residue reconstruction attack RR by injecting zeros into randomly selected positions of the HE, encrypted sample level gradients to prevent the RR from reconstructing these gradients correctly. Fake gradients FG is proposed to defend against catastrophic data leakage in VFLCAFE by replacing the true gradients with randomly generated ones while keeping their corresponding positions. ERAVL defends against model inversion MI through adversarial training. Masquerade Defense MD is proposed to thwart the binary feature inference attack BFI by misleading the attacker to focus on randomly generated binary features. AP Paleo MG Day thwart the protocol aware active attack PLA by masking encrypted sensitive information to prevent the attacker from learning the precise value of the passive party's output and private features. 
compared to traditional defenses like DP and GS, emerging defenses further improve the effectiveness of defenses. CAE and DCAE both show promising effectiveness in defending against targeted backdoor attack. Our VFL defends against both target and non-target backdoor attacks in VFL scenarios by robust features of space recovery. Besides effectiveness, efficiency and privacy, a critical challenge for establishing a stable and sustainable federation among parties is the lack of fair data valuation and incentive design to allocate profits. In addition, a responsible VFL framework should also address various bias problems towards certain groups of people. Moreover, as industrial use cases grow in fields that are highly regulated, such as financial and medical fields, to make the trained VFL model explainable to authorities and compliance is of paramount importance. We propose a comprehensive VFL framework consisting of major considerations for setting up and up in the VFL algorithm. We term this framework VFLOW. In VFLOW, we take into account major constraints, including privacy, efficiency, and fairness, to guide the design of a VFL algorithm from aspects of the model architecture and partition settings, effectiveness and efficiency improving strategies, privacy defense strategies, as well as fairness improving strategies covered in this work. In addition, VFLOW consists of a separate risk evaluation module that comprehensively evaluates data attacks and defense strategies. Finally, for model usage, party contributions, accountability, and verifiability tools are necessary for a sustainable and trustworthy federation. We further extend the objective function formulated of VFL to a more general meta objective, in which we want to minimize the main task cloth, i.e., maximize utility constrained by privacy, efficiency, i.e., communication and computation, and fairness. MP denotes a measurement for measuring privacy leakage imposed by attacks K against the defense strategy P. ME is the efficient answer, typically with respect to communication load and computation resources. MB measures the system bias. Epsilon P, Epsilon E, and Epsilon B are constraints for privacy leakage, efficiency cost, and bias, respectively. Further, we reviewed data sets commonly used in current VFL works. Most of the data sets used in VFL research are tabular data sets from finance, healthcare, and advertising. This manifests that, on the one hand, VFL has a broad range of applications in the three fields. On the other hand, tabular data sets dominate VFL research for their convenience in forming multi-party scenarios in VFL, indicating that we are short of research data sets of diverse types e.g. image, text, or video. In addition, only NUSWIDE and vehicle data sets consist of multimodal features that can naturally simulate the two-party VFL scenario. Other data sets are adopted from existing machine learning research works, and there is no established way for VFL researchers to partition these data sets for VFL research. Therefore, facilitating industrial applications and academic research in the VFL area calls for practical data sets and high quality benchmarks. The need for VFL has arisen and grown strongly in the industry in recent years. Companies and institutions owning only small and fragmented data have constantly been looking for compensating data partners to collaborate and develop artificial intelligence AI technology for maximizing data utilization. Accordingly, many privacy-preserving projects and platforms supporting VFL have been developed in the past two years, and the number of commercialized projects as well as the economic values of VFL have grown significantly. Top open source VFL projects include WebMX Fate, OpenMinds PySift, Fedon, Betas Padflip, Bytedensis Feedliner, and February Framework, which is jointly proposed by National University of Singapore and Tsinghua University. As for major applications, they are mainly concentrated in a few industries. In digital advertising, advertisers, and advertising platforms, such as social media companies often have different attributes of the same group of people. 
advertisers have customers purchase behaviors and social media has customers profiles and social preferences etc. Therefore it is natural for them to build data collaboration models via VFL. For example, ByteDance developed a tree-based VFL algorithm based on the FeedLunar framework, which significantly improves its advertising efficiency. Based on the VFL module in its 9 and FL framework, JD has established a joint model for advertising, which has promoted the cumulative increase of all participating parties' income. Tencent applied its angel powerful platform to establish a VFL federation between advertisers and advertising platforms to boost model accuracy. In financial field, marketing and risk <coughs> control are two important tasks. Since banks often lack the necessary information for comprehensive risk evaluation, they resort to external data sources to improve model performance. For example, WeBank uses customers' credit data and invoice information from partner companies to jointly build a risk control model for small and micro enterprises. Industrial and Commercial Bank of China used vertical federated learning to establish fraud account identification model with other institutions. In the field of smart medical care, vertical federated learning framework provides an effective solution for the applications and areas in which the data features of a single medical institution are not rich enough and data from more medical institutions need to be combined and applied research of VFL to medicals and areas have been very active. Finally, VFL have been applied in wireless networks for access mobility management and session management, cooperative sensing and network disaggregation. VFL have also been applied successfully in emerging areas such as smart grid and intelligent manufacturing. Finally, we discussed some of the major open challenges facing the development of VFL frameworks and proposed possible paths in the future. The first challenge is establishing interoperability between different VFL platforms. In recent years, more and more VFL projects and open source platforms have been developed and applied in real world scenarios. However, different platforms adopt different sets of secure computation and privacy preserving training protocols, making cross platform collaboration difficult and turning data silos into platform silos. One possible road to solve this challenge is to enforce the interoperability of platforms by developing algorithm and architecture standards so that platforms can connect with others more readily. Another road is to develop seed projects to support fundamental function tool lines and modules for interoperability as a plug-in tool for diverse platforms. The second challenge is building a trustworthy VFL. To be trustworthy, VFL frameworks must appropriately reflect characteristics such as privacy and security, effectiveness, efficiency, fairness, explanatively, robustness, and verifiability. Data needs to be protected in transit and at rest with clear security and privacy definitions and scopes. Despite recent research efforts on this subject, there is still a lack of universally effective defense strategies that are lossless and highly efficient. The trade-off between utility, privacy, efficiency is still the focus of future studies. In addition, the path toward a trustworthy FL framework is for the trained models to be verifiable and auditable. One possible route is for the released trained models in VFL to be protected by verifiable intellectual property protection methods in an efficient manner to prevent malicious attacks while fulfilling privacy requirements. Enabling automated VFL and integrating blockchain into VFL are two other challenging but valuable research directions. Automated machine learning AutoML is of great interest in alleviating human effort and achieving satisfactory model performance. For VFL, participants without labels cannot perform individual training or evaluation locally. Thus, their hyperparameters are nested in collaborative training. This unique setting makes AutoML in VFL challenging. Blockchain is leveraged to address the fact that a vanilla FL framework heavily relies on a central server, which may lead to a single point of failure or privacy vulnerabilities. Blockchain allows participating parties to exchange their model updates without a central server. Integrating blockchain into VFL frameworks to improve overall security and robustness is an interesting future direction.
Finally, the next generation mobile network 6 G are considered the fundamental information infrastructure for communication, computing, and storage, in which we anticipate future VFL frameworks will be based on and serve as a native feature. As an effective AI framework suitable for distributed networks, native VFL technologies will help the 6 G ecosystem achieve AI for network and network for AI. In summary, despite its practical usefulness, as evidenced by a growing number of VFL projects and use cases, the breadth and depth of the research advances still lag behind those of HFL. We hope this work will encourage future research efforts to address these challenges in this area.